Good morning from Sosisvle, Namibia. It is just after 6.30 a.m. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what you can photograph in the national park. And it all starts right now. Let's go. Morning, Gregoire. Are you ready to go shoot some dead things? <laughs> dead trees, dead trees, that sounds better, yeah. Let's go. Uh, good morning, folks. This is your captain from the flight deck. Uh, we're now arriving in Sosisvle, Namibia. Uh, current weather in the desert is 35 degrees Celsius with winds out of the west southwest at 40 miles an hour. Uh, severe turbulence is expected, so I'm going to turn on the fastened seatbelt sign for the remainder of the flight. Should be on the ground in 25 minutes. All right, good morning. We are going to start our video heading towards Deadflay. This is one of the most popular locations within the park for photography, and for good reason. It is very photogenic, and I'm sure you've seen lots of photos of this location before. But if you are planning on coming to uh, Sosasvle, if you're interested in what to photograph, which is hopefully why you're watching this video, it is about a 1.5 kilometer walk on sand, which is why I'm half out of breath here. Walking on sand is not easy but luckily it's also not that difficult of a hike so 1.5k it's about 20 minutes to get in there and then it opens up to you and there's all this space to roam around and find different compositions and the light is especially very good at sunrise and one of the other reasons that people come here so early at sunrise is because it's so hot here it can get up to you know easily over 40 degrees during the day in this park so the best time to photograph by far is uh, sunrise not only for the light but also because it's much cooler and then also sunset has very very good light as you'll see later in this video but it is much hotter at sunset so the best time by far is to get up early you know 5 30 kind of thing get to the uh, second gate if you're staying within the national park which we'll talk about later in this video if you get through that second gate right away as soon as it opens quarter to six right now at the moment of filming this video you can drive the 61 kilometers to get to the end of the road which is a parking lot just here and then you've got a short 20 minute hike to Deadflay. And Deadflay is amazing, as you'll see right now. And the sun has just risen above the horizon of the dunes and we've got this beautiful light cascading across the uh, the dead flay and what i'm trying to do here and this is a very good photography tip so i want to start with this right away is i'm trying to isolate a couple of the trees with my 7200 and it's uh the center column is fully extended which i honestly don't do very often but i needed to get the height because i want to cut out the sky and that's really important there's a good trick in photography especially landscape photography where if you have a very dark background behind your subject and then there's light coming across the frame which creates separation between the background and the subject or if that light is hitting the subject and another good example of this was uh, back on the last trip in Greenland we got a fantastic photograph of an iceberg in Sisimute and it had a very very dark background of a mountain and this is the same kind of uh, idea with an extremely dark background of the uh, Big Daddy Dune there and then cutting out the sky so that you only have the subject of the trees in the foreground and then the light that's kind of cascading across the valley is creating that separation it's looking really really nice so uh, yeah very good photo to start and uh, I wanted to give a little bit more background information about what we're doing here and uh, if you are new to the channel about the work that I'm doing here as a photographer and videographer so uh, let's talk a bit more about that as we explore Sosis Play and the National Park in Namibia. So Brendan Vanson just gave me a really good tip shooting directly into the sun. I would set my f-stop at f11 because that's what I've been shooting at all morning. But he said to avoid the lens flare, shoot at 2.8. So we got this beautiful scene 
of a tree with shadows coming across. I'm shooting directly right into it and getting that awesome sunlight coming through the top of the frame and again creating a dark background where you've got no sky just like the uh, other shots that we shot this morning and 2.8 makes that light really really soft at the top and uh, eliminates the lens flare which is a really good tip so got to shout out Mr. Uh, Brennan Van Son who you may recognize from such films as the photographer's island paradise and the photographer uh, love island. I was just gonna say photographer island, yeah. Yeah, oh, you missed the love photo island. love island. And only a couple hours later, the sun is out in full force, which means it's time for us to head back towards the uh, the campsite, which is just inside of the park. And we're gonna have some breakfast and chill out for the next like seven or eight hours because it is so hot during the day that there's really not much we can do until like, you know, four or 5 p.m. So yeah, that's the best part of landscape photography as I know many of you know, watching this early mornings before the world wakes up and some late evenings with great light, so. In the middle of the day, we just get to chill. <laughs> and welcome to our campsite. This is uh, where we've set up for two nights and it is in Solstice in the National Park, just inside of the first gate. So if you're looking up the area, the uh, the town to look for is Cesriem. And that is, I wanna say Cesarim, but I think it's Cesriem. And that is sort of just outside of the beginning of Solstice And there's a gate actually that, uh, that stops people from coming into the park. And you are able to come into the park just inside of the first gate, there are two gates, to stay here. And this is a campsite which is managed Managed by NWR, stands for the Namibian Wildlife Resorts, and they manage a whole bunch of different areas throughout the entire country in the national parks for people to get permits to camp. So that's what our group has done. And there's also though a couple different lodges, some are privately owned and some I think are even managed by NWR as well that uh, you could stay at. Some are outside of the first gate and some are inside of this first gate. So there's a ton of accommodation options inside of the first gate. Now I keep on saying that because there are two gates. As I mentioned that the second gate stops people from going into the park from this area uh, past hours of opening so they you know at night or trying to control the the flow of people and uh, that's a good thing not so good for photographers but I understand the overall value when it comes to tourism uh, in general and that second gate is uh, is sort of what we're in between here is the first and second so the second gate opens at 5 45 a.m and closes at 8 p.m. So it allows us enough time right now, this time of year, to go back well into the park, you know, another 50, 60 kilometers to the end of the road to be able to shoot sunset. And that is what we're gonna go do right now. We have made it to Dune 45. This uh, dune here you can see in the background is a very famous part of uh, Sosa's Flay in the National Park down here uh, because you can climb up to the top and then run your way down just like uh, Big Daddy Dune at Dead Flay where we were this morning. Now, as a photographer, I actually have been to the top of that. It was 10 years ago and uh, with Cameron took some photos and that will be the title of the next video, my photos from 10 years ago versus today. Uh, and I think that it is, you know, worth doing for sure, but it's definitely a challenge and takes a while and because it's so bloody hot out here it uh, not is not for the faint-hearted for sure I think it would probably take you about half an hour to get to the top which sounds relatively easy but hiking on sand is not easy and again it's really really hot and if you're carrying gear you know keep that in mind too but if you are looking to come here to make photographs there is a good shot uh, from the road of basically all of these dunes and all these dunes are numbered as well right so this is number 45 number 40 is really nice number 35 is really nice so uh, you can just sort of drive along the road stop on the side of the road like we've done here and uh, take a couple photos of the dunes so yeah Dune 45, 
in Sosa's play, but we are gonna continue. Let's hit the road. All right, let's talk about wildlife real quick because we have just seen a ton of oryx and even some springbok. I wasn't able to get any good like video or, uh, or photo footage, but I can see them off in the distance running across the uh, the dirt road there. But uh, photographing, uh, especially oryx in this park is very easy. They're all over the place. I can basically guarantee that you're gonna see them when you come here. And uh, they are relatively easy to photograph. Beautiful, beautiful animal. And uh, it's good to have a long lens, a telephoto, something like a 7200, 100 to 400, 200 to 600. Those are all very, very useful in this park and in Namibia in general, honestly. So you definitely want to bring a uh, telephoto lens or even a teleconverter if you only have the 7200. Uh, because you know you can get out of your car here which is really nice and uh, even sort of walk around it, but it is it's bloody hot and it's a desert so you got to be careful but uh, it is possible to get out of your car and get some beautiful photographs of these animals in their natural habitat with just amazing backdrops so uh, another photography tip for you coming here definitely want a telephoto lens to try and get the most out of uh, out of the wildlife photos <laughs> And good evening, we are back at the end of the road here in Sosasvle National Park. It is almost 7 p.m. and uh, the sun is just casting this perfect light across the dunes. Absolutely beautiful here this evening. We are the only group here uh, because the park does close at 8 and we are kind of pushing our time. But we are a group of photographers and I wanted to explain uh, earlier in this video, but I forgot that uh, this is a workshop being run by Brendan Vanson, who is a Canadian travel photographer. And uh, him and I have been working together for over five years now. And he runs uh, travel photography workshops around the world and uh, asked me to come and help him run the trips because I used to be a tour leader with a Canadian company called G Adventures. And obviously I work as a photographer, both in travel and landscape and in Hamburg where I live in Germany. So I'm very lucky to, uh, to call this my job and it has been for the last six years running my own business in the, the freelance world. But uh, part of that is when Brendan hires me to come on assignment to help him run these tours, to test my tour leader skills. And uh, I have been in Namibia a couple times before. I've been here now three times. So I'm happy to be back to be able to share this amazing landscape with the other photographers on the group. And also my knowledge about photography, including what you're sort of seeing in this video um, with them. So helping them get those bucket list shots that they're looking for. So it's uh, a wild ride with Mr. Vanson, as I'm sure a lot of you guys watching this know, we've done a number of trips together and uh, it's always a hell of a lot of fun. So I'm happy to be here and uh, happy to be getting these photos. And uh, this place, we just went to Hidden Flay, which is a little different. It's beside Dead Flay. And last time I was here, it was actually flooded, which is crazy, given that we're in the desert. But when it does rain, these, uh, these little lagoons can fill up. And it created these amazing cracks in the uh, mud. And I was able to get a three-shot focus stack on what I think is an okay image. It's nothing too special, but utilizing foreground is really, really important in photography. And when you do find a good foreground subject, you can usually stack that image to create, uh, you know, this look that everything is in focus and you get rid of the focus breathing. And I think it looks pretty cool. So yeah, you let me know what you think in the comments below. And we are gonna go and get some dinner because I'm hungry. And then it's another sunrise here in Sosa's Flay, Namibia.
Good morning from Sossesvlei, Namibia. We have a beautiful, beautiful sunrise over the mountains in the background there. And we've just uh, pulled off to the side of the road because that is another great photography tip here. You want to be careful, obviously, but you can easily pull off to the shoulder of this road and, uh, and be able to photograph any of these dunes. So don't feel like you need to go to specific spots. It is definitely possible to uh, just pull over, take a look at what you want to see and uh, photograph that, especially with light like this. Another beautiful, beautiful morning. And then one tip that I wanted to mention yesterday and didn't get, didn't get the chance to do is at dune 45, dune 41, dune 35. Can you climb 35? You can climb anyone that you want. A good tip is to get up a little bit just to change that perspective. You can climb up maybe like 50 meters or something just to give yourself kind of upper eye looking down view onto the valley, which can create a really, really nice uh, perspective and get great photos. So just get a little bit higher onto the dune and you should be able to find great photos. So a couple of things to remember when visiting Solstice and what to photograph here is you definitely want to be here really early in the morning, you know, getting to the gate at like 5.30, 5.45. You want a four by four vehicle, something that you can drive that last stretch of the road because the road from Sestriem through the second gate all the way till the end is 61 kilometers and that last little stretch is uh, deep sand. So you need something that has four wheel drive to get you to the Dead Flay parking lot. From Dead Flay, once you're actually in the, uh, the lagoon area that's dry, you wanna make sure that you can get a good shot that has a dark background behind your subject and try and focus on separating the trees so that you get that, uh, that sense of separation which looks really nice in, in photos. And I think here in Sosa's Way, it's really important that you focus on uh, on the light and looking for the dynamics between the shadows and the highlights, which is very, very easy with these dunes. And you can stop on the side of the road like we've done here this morning to get the photos of the dunes, dune 35, dune 41, dune 45, etc. What we went over earlier, they're all beautiful to shoot. So uh, yeah, as you make your way down towards the parking lot, you can stop and take photographs. Sunset light is also very, very nice here. And uh, during the day, it's way too hot. So keep that in mind. For wildlife, you want a telephoto for sure, which is also very useful for landscape. So something like 70 to 200 or 100 to 400, 100 to 500, 200 to 600. You get the idea. You guys know what I'm talking about. Very, very useful here. And uh, have fun, you know? You'll get great photos. That's a guarantee. You'll definitely see Oryx, Springbok, sand dunes, and uh, light like this because we're in the desert. And for us, uh, this is the second video in uh, Namibia as part of this series. I'm happy to be back and it's good to be on a workshop with Brendan once again. And uh, next up is the, the 10 year photo uh, review. So the first time I came here was 10 years ago and I want to show you as the car goes by, I want to show you the difference between those photos from 10 years ago and photos from this trip. So you be the judge. I will see you in the next video. Bye.